Um, hello, everybody. And um, yeah, so when Harry asked me to 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 come and talk to you today, um, I, at first I was like, oh, I, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. And I got my coaching hat on and I thought, oh, I'm going to talk about, you know, coaching and what I talk to clients about. But then um, I thought it might be best to start with a story and the story story of 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 me really and and how i got to where i am and all the different struggles because i think that at the end of the day that's pretty much what we all I and mean, it's not an unusual story i think we all have different obstacles that we overcome that are presented to us and i was listening to to the speaker before me and and and, and definitely she had some some struggles there and um, I wasn't up early enough to listen to the other speakers, but I'm assuming that they also had their own stories. So one of the exercises that I do with, um, especially with women lately, I, for the past three years, I've been focusing more on working with executive women. And one of the exercises that we start off with is doing an uh, an anal a reflection really about our lives and starting from birth to where we are now and identifying those key moments that got us to where we are today. And so I usually start my sessions with that story of me. And that's what I want to start with um, with you today. And it starts off with um, because a lot of what what has happened to me in my life made me who I am and and how I got to where I am, and one of the main characters in my story is are women, and and specifically my mother and my grandmothers, um, both paternal and maternal. Um, so the story starts with birth. Birth. I was born in London. Um, my father was studying his, uh, his specialty. He was, he was studying to become a doctor and then he, they left to England to, to pursue his, um, his specialty and mom was there. She had been told by many doctors that she shouldn't get pregnant. She shouldn't have children because of her health. And, um, apparently I, and life had other plans for her and I, and I was born and she got pregnant and she and um and here I am um I guess I was very a very determined uh person I needed to come to this world somehow some way um so starting with that after, after I was born uh they left England and they went to Mexico which is where I was raised. I was raised between Guadalajara and Jalisco, uh, in Jalisco and Mexico City. One of the main things that happened, unbeknownst to me when I was little, because I didn't really realize what was going on, but um, my father, who was a very um, interesting man, whom unfortunately passed away later, but that comes later in the story, um, he kept on telling mom, you know, um, she got offered an amazing job in the city and uh, in Mexico City, which was uh, a, a commute. She had to jump on a plane every day and um, and go to Mexico City and, uh, and, and do her job as a marketing uh, a director for a company. But when she was first offered the job, she didn't want to take it because she thought, oh, I want to stay home. I want to be with my daughter. And, you know, and she was over the moon with her newly, <laughs> new, newly born daughter. And my father kept on telling her, no, you have to take this job. It's a fantastic opportunity for you. And um, Ana Paula will be fine. She, 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 you know, will figure things out. And she said, no, I want to stay with my daughter. And then he said, no, you have to go because you never know what's going to happen to me. You know, tomorrow I could walk up the street and be run over by a bus. And so finally, my mother was convinced to um, to go to, to Mexico City, accept the job. So they made it work. And yes, it meant that mom had to commute. And it did mean that, um, that they had to figure out how I was going to be taken care of. Many times I flew with mom to the city and I would be with my grandmother. Sometimes I would be uh, left in, in Guadalajara with my aunt who happened to live there as well. And so they made it work. They relied a lot on support from the family and from friends. And, um, and, and, and that was the way that they managed. 
Mom became very successful in her career. Dad continued to work as a doctor and uh, an, an army doctor, which also was very demanding on him for for time. And um, and you know, fast forward a few years, they moved to Mexico City, and um, finally, Dad was very happy because he was able to to go to a place where he wanted to be as well. So that made things a lot easier for them in terms of the commute and and care for me. At that point, I was enrolled in a British school in Mexico City, and um, one of one one of maybe, I think it's maybe a total of two or three British schools in this, in Mexico City. Um, which was a great opportunity, and I, I attribute a lot of my learning and my way of being to that school, and, and obviously my parents, thankfully, for, for enrolling me in that school. Um, I learned a lot about um, critical thinking, and I learned a lot about different cultures. It was a fantastic school to be brought up. Um, I, I think that most of the kids in that school happened to be kids, children of diplomats that came to, to Mexico City and also from multinational corporations, which was a very interesting mix of um, cultures and religions and, 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 and whatnot. So that in and of itself was a great learning. Um, but unfortunately, by the time that I was age 10, uh, my father passed away. Um, and that was a, a, a obviously a huge shock for both mom and myself. Um, he had been sick for a while. We didn't. I didn't. Wasn't completely aware of the 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 degree to which he was ill. But he was very ill. And um, and as a doctor, he never gave up. He always wanted to to give himself. Um, up for for the study of medicine and if something came up from from people learning about his disease then that's what he wanted to 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 do he knew what he had he knew he didn't have much to to go on and had several conversations with mom about that mom always the, uh, was very positive and maybe that's where i get my positiveness my positivity but um uh, so he did pass. He was only 35. He was an amazing man and uh, very well regarded and very um, well well known. To this day, we still go back to Mexico City for um, homages that they might have paid paid for for him and um, and his study. He focused on the disease of liver liver disease and um, and he published several um, articles and books about that. At any rate. Um, moving, I, when, when dad passed away, I, I really got to see mom, uh, become this amazing businesswoman. And I, I think that that's one of the main things that I take from my story and which I started with at the beginning is women around me, both grandmother and mom, all looking at them and how they had survived and thrived through adversity. Um, but seeing mom and how she handled dad passing, and not only that, but just taking care of me, they, not just me, but her parents and the family and, and everybody else around her, she just, she just continued to soldier on. She was devastated, obviously, by the passing of my father, but she didn't let it hold her down too long. She just kind of gave herself the moment that she needed to take for grieving and then just soldier on. At that point, mom had her own print shop, uh, which was a huge success in Mexico City because uh, the printing business was mainly um, uh, run by men, actually, in Mexico. Um, it was a very male-dominated dominant, industry, like many other industries in, 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 in business. And so she was able to to move forward and with her print shop and um and 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 not just secure a life for herself but for my for me as well with education at that point uh later on she met my stepfather who whom I call father and um and he has been an amazing dad as well so moving further further along um in terms of key moments that have built who I am and have brought me to where I'm at. 
um, I had learned through observing how my mother uh, navigated life and adversity, how to just be very persistent and tenacious and, and, and just really focused on what it is that I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. So um, maybe sometimes the how wasn't so clear, but as long as the where I wanted to go was clear, it was um, the, the how kind of came naturally. Um, moving forward in my life, I came to, I, I finished school in Mexico City, and then I went to study university in, here to Florida in Miami, where I have, where I currently reside. But back then um, I arrived, I decided this is where I wanna be. And it was an amazing opportunity. Um, the amount, again, going back to the schooling, being in the at University of Miami in Florida gave me a huge um, opening in, to all the cultures again. Um, it was a school that was mostly attended by international students. And um, that gave me a lot of uh, insight into life, into people. I've always been very interested in people and how and and how they behave and how they think and how they do what they do and how they, and especially people that that just despite adversity, whatever their adversity might be, um, how they just continue to push through and and succeed in whatever it is that they that they that they decide and that, that they want to do. So um, I studied psychology, I studied the business management as well. So I got a double major in both those areas. And um, psychology is fascinating. It allows me to, to, to be very curious and, and, and also to help others to move forward by helping them identify what obstacles might be in their way and um, and then help them with uh, cognitive behavioral therapy techniques to move forward. So I use that a lot in my coaching and um, and help uh, most of my business owners move forward that way. But um, so moving um, after graduating from uh, during that moment during that period, I did get a lot of learnings as well. One of them was to become strong and confident in uh, decisions. I had been in a relationship with someone for four years and dis and unfortunately that did not work out, but, um, and, and it did not work out because several uh, incidents happened. And one of them being um, a very strong incident that I don't care to talk about it right now because maybe it might not be the, the best to listen to at this time. But um, but it did because it was such a an incredibly a impactful incident um, that involved you know again the life of someone who had been very close to to that person when when we were dating that um that I just thought no this is not this is not what I want in my life and I, and I cannot um indulge in in this because I don't I it's it, it's it was a very scary situation so I decided to say no I'm not gonna do this and be and again going back to the to the being strong and confident and focused um you know a pattern that I had been learning through life by watching and observing not just mom but uh my grandmother as, as well that um that I just found that strength to say, no, this is not for me. And let me move forward for the next thing in life instead of staying in victim mode and, um, and, and seeing what was going to happen um, and leaving it up to somebody else to decide. So um, when I came out of college, I started my practice and, um, and it was a, another learning experience working. I initially as a psychotherapist, I worked with, juvenile delinquents and their families, which was another um, huge learning experience from all the families that I worked with, which I loved. And um, and still to this day, get phone calls from, from the children that are no longer children, they're now adults, um, whom 
whom were impacted by the therapy and the work that we did together. And it was a very rewarding experience and something that I might want to go back to um, later on in my in my career, in my life. But um, I think one of the after, you know, after a little while of that, it, it becomes a, it t- began to take a little a, a bit of a toll on me. And plus, I wanted to start a family. And um, and so I did. I started I had my two sons who are now teenagers. One of them just turned 18. So he's no longer a child. He's now considered a man for some things. <laughs> That's something that I never understood, really. But um, anyway, um Moving along with that, it's uh, have during that time is when I got introduced to business coaching, and um, and what I love about business coaching is that I get to continue learning about people and their lives, and what got them to where they are, and how I can help them move forward in their business, and not just in their business but in their life. During this time, um, as of late, especially. Um, and I think it's one of the main reasons why Harry invited me to to speak is um, the different the 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 many the varied um, obstacles and incidents that have been come that have been put in my path, um, and yet still um, I find a way to just make it work. So. Those main things happen to be, yes, dealing with the children and, and not just with the, and, and, and the everyday thing of, you know, taking them to school, making sure that they're okay. But um, the eldest one has, was diagnosed with epilepsy, maybe, I think it was last year. So it was taking care of him and all of a sudden neurologists and so on and so forth. And then aside from that, I, you know, uh, I think it was maybe a few years ago. Um, I don't know the exact number anymore because <laughs> there's so many things that happen. Um, going through um, a, a separation from my husband, and then still me being sh- making sure that I was the 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 breadwinner and maintain my practice my practice whilst also dealing with the emotional side of life, and then also taking care of the children. And then also, as of late, um, dealing with on the other side, which is uh, my parents, but um, more specifically, my mom who was diagnosed with cancer, and then making it so that I could deal with the personal side, the family side, and then life, and then also business so it's like the three different buckets I call it and I always talk about this the three buckets with clients as well with that with the women that I work with as executives that I work with it's you always have to figure out um you know there's these three buckets in your life at least in my life the main ones there's a bunch of other little ones aside as well but there's this three main buckets right it's yourself there's your family and relationships, and then there's your business. And at any given time, one or two have to take the back burner, and then one will take center stage that you have to focus on. But you can't completely let go of the other two that are in the back burner, because if you do, then then it takes so much longer to, to kind of um, bring them back. So as long as you have them in the back burner, not completely ignored, but um, but tended to, just keeping them warm so that they don't completely go cold, then I think that, and reshuffling every time. But I think that the most important thing is number one, to take a good, good reflection on those key points that got you to where you are, so you can identify your strengths. Because if it wasn't for those for, for that um, ability in my case. So what I take from my reflection on my key points in that trajectory of my life is that is that of resilience. It's that of you get knocked down and you kind of feel like, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like you're wounded, you cry, you might get angry, you might, whatever emotion comes with whatever knocks you down. And that's okay to do. You have to give yourself that space to 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 do that. But then, you know, then move forward. Then just say, okay, fine. Yes, this has happened. And this is awful. And this is um, not easy. But, but there is 
um, something that I always told patients when in, in psychotherapy was everything has a solution except death. So no matter what situation you're in, no matter how drastic, no matter how hard it is, there is always some way to get out of it. You might not see it in the moment because you're so clouded by whatever the drama is, whatever the, the, the situation is, but there is a different way out and there is a way forward. So as long as you have that, that, you know, give yourself that space to let go of whatever the emotion is, then you can then in a clear headed manner, be just very, very methodical about, okay, well that happened and this puts a kink in my plan, but it's not the end of the world. The only thing that will put an end to whatever it is that I want to do is death. Um, so with that in mind, then the other piece or the key piece is always being sure of what you want to get. So it might change. It doesn't mean that, you know, if you define uh, in 10 years, I want to be here, this is what I want to do, or in one year, this is what I want to do. Um, you can always take a moment and kind of pause and see, okay, is this still where I want to go? And if it is, am I on track? Am I going to where I want to go? And if I am, am I on track? What is it that I need to make sure and ensure that I'm getting to where I'm going to get? And, and then the other piece that I find that is crucial to get through adversity and, and through pressure is a good support system. Identify those people around you, whether it's family, friends, a coach, a mentor, um, a teacher, professor, clergy, whatever it may be, and, and all of those, if possible, make sure that you that you do surround yourself with a good support system because they are invaluable. There are the people that are there that can show you a different perspective um, about the situation that you're in. It's kind of in in coaching, we I always use the analogy of sport because and especially with basketball, because I do love basketball. But if you're a player and you're in the game of basketball, and it could be soccer, it could be any game. But if you are playing and you're and you're the athlete and you're and you're already you, you if you're an athlete and you're playing the the sport, you're probably already very good. But it's always good to have somebody on the sidelines, a coach or someone that is that is able to see a different perspective of the game because you're so busy in the game that your your goal is just to shoot as many hoops as you can to get as many points as you can but the coach also is outside and sees the game from a different angle and that different and can tell you and call a timeout and say listen we're going to change the strategy because what you were doing before is no longer going to work because i've just noticed xyz and so this way um if you do it if we change the strategy you will get a better opportunity to make those those shoots or those hoops um and much the same way whether it's a coach or somebody that, that is in your support system, uh, again, they have a different perspective and they help you see what's going on. So be vocal and talk to people about what's going on if you're having an issue. Recently with my mother being in hospital, um, that was one of the things that that I realized that the more that I talked to people about the fact that mom had cancer and she had pancreatic cancer, she has pancreatic cancer, she's she's still with us and she's fighting the fight. Um, the more that I spoke to people, the more that people would say, oh, I'm dealing with the same thing. And not only that, but I also have children and I have a business and I have this and I have that. And I just thought, oh my God, I, I'm not alone. I'm not the only person dealing with this, which is, there's, there's some sense of comfort and you're not being alone. And then you also have somebody else to talk to that will share in that experience and give you some input. And if they have already went, gone through it, what worked for them? How did they manage to go forward? So um, so reflect on what uh, on those key moments in your life uh, that got you to where you're at. Um, identify where you want to go, identify who your support system is. And if you don't have someone specific, get a coach or get someone else that might, or a therapist that might be able to help you through. 
Um, the other thing is making a plan. Once you have a where where you want to get to, you make a plan. And how can I get there? What are the things that I'm going to need to be able to get to where I want to get to? And um, and then and and again, support. Just talking to people and letting them know where you're at and where you want to get to, what you're going through, and then rotating those buckets, your focus on those buckets. It's just, I would say that those are my five main points, right? It's um, the reflecting on what got you to where you are. So, uh, and most likely what got you to where you are will will not help you get to the next stage in your life. You probably have to 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 add some other skills and some other knowledge in order to get to where you want to get to. Um, identify where you want to get to, very important, so that you can get there. And then every every once in a while, you know, go back to it and adjust if it needs to be adjusting. Um, making the plan to get to where you want to get to and um, and getting the support to help you get through. I think that those are the main things that have gotten me to where I'm at and be able to continue if it wasn't for those things and get, I do have a coach. I do walk the talk. If it wasn't for my coach, um, I think that we would, I would be in a totally different space because um, that coach definitely helped me get my mind straight and focused um, on what I need to do. So being strong, being confident, being focused are very important in order to, to get to where you want to get to. I see that we're at 544. So I don't want to continue going on with my story. <laughs> I don't know if Harry, I don't know if we're, we're, we have time, <laughs> but I think we're done. We have, we have some time and we have some, you know, a few minutes for questions. If anybody's got a specific okay. question, you're welcome to, to type it in. I think on top of everything you've shared, and there's a lot going on, you've also now, as a dutiful daughter, stepped in to help mom and dad run their business whilst you've got your own business and you've got all this other stuff going on. Yes. And the buckets is a good analogy to, to go spend the time and you gave five great points on how to focus on it. How are you coping? What do you use to cope when you're pulled into all these directions and, and, and you want to be able to serve all the buckets and you want to be able to make people happy, but how are you coping? I you know, like I said before, definitely having a coach is one of them. Um, having a good support system. In my case, I have a group of five girlfriends whom uh, they're a mix from childhood friends that I've known since I was a young girl in Mexico and and some that were from college. But I think that having a strong support system to help you cope, I mean, for me, that help me cope with everything is key. But um, in terms of focusing with all the different moving parts, having my practice, the boys and mom and dad's business, it's, it's really just being super laser focused and disciplined on the things that I need to do. So there's very little time for distraction and, and it's, it's interesting because just the other day I was talking to um, a very well-known businesswoman here in the States. Uh, her name is Barbara Corcoran, and she. some people that watch Shark Tank might know her, but um, she is one of those uh, very laser-focused, non-apologetic women, <laughs> and um, she doesn't have time, and she's just very, stri very straight and to the point with it and tells you, I have no time to be a mentor. I I, I would love to be a mentor, but I, I just don't have the time because if I do that, then I have to do, then I have to let go of all the other things that I need to take care of. So I think that it's, it's just that being laser focused and knowing um, how to prioritize your time. I, I, I am someone who's very, who pays a lot of attention to, to family and family. Um, number one is health without health. You don't have anything, but number two is family. So, but without business, I can't take care of my family. So it has to be those three things are my, num my, my trilogy, my holy trilogy, if you will. So as long as everything that I'm doing has to do with those three main areas in my life, then I'm good. Brilliant. So you also do a lot of work with, with women who are going through stuff, like, yeah. like you said, and everybody's going through stuff. You gave five points that we, you know, how to get the focus, how to move towards what you want, how to understand what's got you here in the first place, all that kind of stuff. What's the first step that you suggest people do 
to go from where they are to create that thriving life across all those different buckets? Um, the first thing is I always like to take inventory. So like I said, reflect on what the, the I would say focus on six to eight main points in your life that created significant, that were pivot points, let me put it that way, that got you to move and to shift things in a, in a different way that got, at the end of the day, got you to where you're at now. And I think that that's important, taking that inventory, because it allows you to identify, number one, all that you have achieved till this, till this point, which we don't usually do. And we don't, and, and, and when I did that exercise, I was, I was actually pretty surprised and I was like, oh my God, I've done so many things and I've come through so many things and, and look at me now. And I've been able to, to manage to, to, so it's a good kind of pat on the back, but it also allows you to see, okay, forward thinking. So I have all these things that I've, all these tools, all these learnings that I've gotten along the way. So how can I use, continue to use them to get me to the next step? So I would say the first thing is starts with that, the reflection of like what happened in the past? What did I do? How did I do it? How did I, what are the strengths that I got from that? What are my tools? What is my skill set? And then well, where do I want to go? Do I still, do I need to acquire a new set of tools? Do I need to go learn something? Do I need to get someone to help me move forward? What is it that I need? But um, so those two main things, it's the past and future, like where that allows you to start making that plan for the present to get to where you want to get to. Good. So last question, and then we'll let you get your day started. Which is <laughs> um, it's starting early today. <laughs> so what a great question here from um, Nico, it's asking, what do you do when you get exhausted and demotivated to move forward? And, and talk purely from your own perspective. Yeah. So what works for me, um, it's if I am exhausted, I take a nap, I go to sleep. Um, but the other thing that I do do is I, I like to go for runs um, and being with nature. So whether it's uh, a walk or a run, I get outside. Um, I walk, I think. I, I don't listen to whatever your pod playlist or whatever is there. I just go and be with nature, whether I have a park that's close by my home and it's right by the bay. So I get to see the ocean. I get to be in this beautiful tropical <laughs> um, landscape that I have here in Florida. Yes, the humidity gets to me, but definitely between sleep and doing and taking that time out, those are the main things that, that get me re-energized and, um, and moving forward.